Yes, thank you guys very much for coming out. Um, I guess, does anybody have any questions? Anybody, oh, got a question already starting over here. here. I have a couple. Um, I'm curious, what was it like working with Reese Witherspoon in uh, the, man, in the, the man, man and the Moon? The Man and the Moon, yeah. Uh, it was, uh, you saw a budding star. You saw a putting star right before your eyes. I mean, you, you know, my, my attitude was, I can't wait to watch what happens in the future. You know, because she was just so, I, I think so the personally the best uh, performance in, in film history uh, for a 14 year old girl. So uh, it, it, was, it was great. It was weird giving her her first kiss. <laughs> But, but um, other than that, it was, yeah, I mean, it was, it was remarkable to watch. You guys know the man in the movie? You guys know that movie? He wasn't even going to go on that audition. I made him go on that audition, yeah, basically. Uh, he, he got me. And he got the role. He got me the job, basically. Is this a good place to vent about how I'm, <laughs> You son of a... No. <laughs> well, I had a car at the time. And he, he didn't, and um, there was an opportunity to go to this audition. And he said, hey man, there's this, this audition happening in Dallas. Um, let's go do it. And with my you know, 17 year old brain, I was like, no, I got a date with my girlfriend tonight. I don't really want to go and do that. Um, you know the inconveniences young yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> I was looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah. um, and, <laughs> and, uh, so I, I agreed to drive him uh, into Dallas to this thing. And we show up and it's like American Idol. It's like, there's like, like 300 people there. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Three to 500 people there or something like that. And we're like, oh, I'm like, crap. Oh man, I'm like, okay, just get in and do it as fast as you can. And so we went in and um, I watched uh, like all of the, the guys do their auditions and um, I was very judgmental when I was like, no, no, no. And uh, I had the lines memorized by the time it came around, and I was like, hey, I'm here. Screw it. Uh, uh, Meanwhile, I was, one of, I, I was one of those other actors that wanted to be there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, he kind of overtook it. <laughs> I was uh, full prepared with my Shakespearean approach. And <laughs> this is acting, and Jason's like, what? I'm like, dude, yeah, this is yeah, so stupid. Stupid. Yeah, that's really... So by the time I got up there, I really didn't really, I, I, I didn't really give a shit. Like, I was like, I'll, okay, here's the lines, I'll, I'll say it. And apparently it worked for the role. And, um, uh, we went back home. It was probably, God, maybe a month later. It was a long time afterwards. It was a long time. And then, we get a call at like, you know, midnight or like one in the morning or whatever. It was our manager at the time. And uh, when, back then, before cell phones, when you got a phone call at one in the morning, that meant bad news. That meant grandma died. That, yeah. meant, you know, that, meant, that meant something bad happened. So we, we ran to the phone and we're like, what? What? And the, the guy that sort of handled the whole thing for us, he goes, uh, is this case in London? I go, yeah. He goes, this is the movie star in London. Like, yeah. What the hell does that even mean? And he's like, he starts laughing. He's like, got the part. And so we're running around with our whole family in the house, like just in tears, like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Actually, our mom, we went and told our mom and she was half asleep and it didn't even hit her. She was like, that's great. And she went back to sleep. <laughs> that's exactly right. And then, like, for when the sun came up, our door sprang open, and my mom ran in. And she was like, "Did you say he got it? Did he get the, Did you guys? Did I dream that? Did that's he exactly, get come in?" That's exactly right. Yeah. So yeah, she, yeah. Her, her, she was like, "Oh, he got it. That's great." And, and then, but, but he, he was there with me every second of the way, and he was my stunt double. He was my photo double. He there's there's a there's a scene in the movie where Reese Witherspoon and I have to go into town and get ice cream. Stuff for ice cream? That's him. That's him. That's not even me. 
So, it's the like, love and then, and then and like, and there's a, th a scene where I, I jump off into like a creek or whatever, and you know, falling so, off the tractor, all of that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so um, he, he ended, and he he also ended up like uh, helping with the sound department, like doing, like, holding the boom no, and I was doing the second boom on forever. I worked with the camera department. Yeah. I worked way harder on that movie than he did. That's that, this is, I will say. I'm not gonna argue with that. <laughs> yeah. Every day in the Louisiana sun. Oh man. Uh, in the Texas, Louisiana. In the, the summer. Down of summer. Oh, it was not glamorous. It was brutal. It was brutal. But we were like, we thought this was supposed to be yeah. glamorous. Yeah. Hollywood's not glamorous. Yeah. So, so it, was like, it was a good way to start. Though. That ended up being a little crazy, and then um, I was able to return the favor in a in a way. Um, uh, I was working on another movie, and, and uh, they had, uh, I had an, uh, an uh, opportunity to audition for a TV series called I'll Fly Away, and I wasn't able to do it, and uh, my agent, manager, whoever the hell it was, they said, if he's got a twin brother, let him do it, and Jeremy went in and I got, got to audition, but got, I, I got kind of moved right to the front of the line because he had already done a lot of the, the work. <laughs> they, they, they pretty much... Uh, had him in mind for it, but he couldn't do it because he was under contract. He got, got the role, something. ended up being on the TV series for what, four years? It was just two years, but we won the Emmy for Best Drama. Oh, that's right, that's right. It was a show called I'll Fly Away. We won the Emmy for Best Drama, and uh, we're promptly canceled. <laughs> Once again, welcome to Glamorous Hollywood. Yeah. What's your dream? So, yeah, no, we it got a nice dose of uh, sort of reality from the get go, but also realized that we were very lucky because it opened a lot of doors for us. And so we've both been able to, you know, uh, keep doors open for each other in the business, which has been pretty cool. Yeah. And we really didn't even work together as actors for for a long time. He did an episode of Seventh Heaven when I was on it. Right. Um, but uh, we really hadn't, we didn't do anything together until we did a movie uh, called Branded, uh, which is on, uh, you guys can see it on Amazon, um, uh, Amazon Prime. Or, or Freebie and yeah. a bunch of Tubi, I think, has it. It's called Branded. It's a really, really great movie that Jay and I did together um, that we're really proud of. Um, but we just recently just did two movies. Gosh, we just did two movies back to back together. Yeah. Like with like two in a in like, like two weeks together. Yeah, both with Mickey Rourke. Yeah, with Mickey Rourke. Yeah, that wasn't, that Woo, was, he's fun. <laughs> <laughs> that was an experience. Wow. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it, except, wow, wow. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> Any other questions? You got another one? My question was, how was it being on 7th Heaven? I loved it because they were all just really, really sweet people. Um, Steven's one of my favorite humans on the planet, so um, my heart was hurt for him while he's had to go through all this nonsense. Um, but uh, it was just a really good group of people, but more than anything, I just, I say it's my cup of tea as far as something I would watch, not necessarily, but my grandmother loved it. Mm. Yeah. And so for that reason alone, it was worth doing because, um, you know, it's just a very wholesome thing that, that like, I can show my kids, you know, and, and, and they'll, they really enjoy it. Uh, my eight-year-old loves the little faith-based movies that I do and stuff like that. Uh, and, it's nice to be able to have that a little bit because most of my stuff I can't show them. <laughs> <laughs> Especially mall rats. I can't and I gotta, man, I just went, I was just at a convention in Oklahoma City and they had a screening of mall rats. And my 86 year old grandmother came to the, to the screening of mall, mall rats. And I forgot how filthy that movie was. And there's nothing that reminds you of how sort of crass it is until you're sitting next to your grandmother with all of the. F bombs being dropped, and afterwards I was like, "What do you think, Grandma?" She's like, well, "Not my cup of tea, but I'm proud of you. Everybody else." Yeah, I also, I also forgot to tell my grandmother about oh. the end of the Man in the Moon. I don't want to give it away here, but if you've seen it, you know what happens. And I, my grandma punched me in the arm, and she's like, "Do you ever do that again to me?" Yeah, you know, something very bad happens. It's yeah, tragic. yeah, and uh, and so I've had to keep Grandma on point about. 
if she's going to watch something, I'll be like, <laughs> let me know that you're going to watch it because I'm going to ne know that I'm either going to be the killer. She'll be or... the first person to flip somebody off and tell them to go have themselves too. So that's not. <laughs> We're talking about an angel here. <laughs> but it was awkward. So true. It was awkward. <laughs> Any more? Anybody Got else? a question here? Yes, sir. Uh, Wait, hold on. Right okay, here. Okay. No, go ahead. Let me go ahead. Okay. The two, and then we got this gentleman. Okay. Here. Well, since she took one of my questions. <laughs> Don't ask me about my ex-wife. I know. I know. I know. This one I, asked I Tom wasn't. Arnold about his about his. Rose. What? I'm sorry. You know. <laughs> but anyway, okay. It is the seventh of the question. Um. Uh. How? What was your audition process like for that? For seventh heaven, yes. I was offered it. Thank God, I didn't have to audition for it. Oh, okay. I was very, very lucky and blessed by that point. That, so I, I gotta say, that, you know, I, I was, uh, I was blessed. But, but uh, <laughs> what? For seventh heaven? I didn't say anything. <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? I don't know. <laughs> I can tell you I what the audition that. process for for Party of Five was. I was that was pretty. That was interesting because. Uh, Jay and I unfortunately lost a sister in a car accident when she was 16, and my character on Party of Five uh, lost his sister, and so I just kind of brought that experience to the audition whenever I went in, and uh, by the time I was finished with the audition, because the whole scene was about losing my sister or whatever, every executive at Fox was bawling their eyes out. There was like 30 people in the room. I was, I've never seen that many people in a room. and. That's the first time I walked out of an audition and went, got that role. <laughs> I knew I had, just knew I had oh, to get I that Oh, I thought it was role. because the audition was so bad. Yeah, it was because it was terrible. Oh, no, no. <laughs> oh no, I was going to mention something. Um, last night I was uh, packing and I was watching TV and Batman Begins, I guess, was with the one with Katie Holmes in it. Yep. And I guess my eyes were just going crazy and I could have sworn it looked like a, a younger you, you guys. Well, and I was like, oh, for a second, oh, I was so like, you just I, aged I'm not a young girl anymore. You just aged us? <laughs> no, I was... Saying, like, so I can, I I I've like never seen Katie Holmes. Holmes look like us. Like, I look like a young Katie Holmes. <laughs> no, I meant like a young Katie Holmes. I would marry Tom Cruise to have that money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. 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 At least you didn't ask us about our ex-wives. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to live that down. This gentleman yeah. up here. Good okay. question in the front. Here. The best hat here. <laughs> Shake and bake. Shake and bake. Shake and bake, baby. Um, it's like a two question. For both of y'all, actually. Um, on Days Confused and Mallrats, was there any kind of props y'all were able to take on? Or uh, I, in, in Days and Confused, I have a very famous belt buckle. Yes. Um, that was a weed pipe. That I had, <laughs> and I was, and I was given that by Richard Linklater at the end of, of the movie, so I was able to take that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Smith didn't say, "Hey, here you can have." Nope. <laughs> no, I have a lot of people trying to give well, me uh, chocolate covered pretzels. <laughs> no, but we all, <laughs> but also like yeah. we end up like you end up taking up like you, like. When you work with films, you end up kind of taking a bunch of crap home from it anyway. So you end up with a house full of shit that you don't need. <laughs> I've got a closet. I've got a closet full of clothes I'll never clothes wear again. We didn't yeah. take clothes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I just yeah. snagged a bunch of clothes. As a matter of fact, the shirt that I wore yesterday was from the reason the last movie that I did. Whenever they brought it out for order, I was like, "That's going over." Yeah, that. I think I have about forty pairs of shoes, which is more than the Beverly Hills housewife had. The best, like, I, don't, like, I put them in just a bucket. I'm like, what the hell am I going to do? The best shoes? props I ever got from a movie, though, was I did a, a Civil War movie called Gods and Generals okay. uh, with Robert Duvall and uh, Jeff Daniels, St. Thomas Helen. And I got to keep uh, the, not only the boots that I wore, uh, but uh, which were, you know, really just this killer uh, riding boots, but uh, the Civil War Kepi that I, that, that I had uh, in the, and a couple of other props from okay. the Civil War era kind um, of thing, which was really in the movies, uh, your characters, did y'all ever, are y'all still like lifelong friends with the other actors? Please, please put it, put it closer to your mouth. Oh, I'm sorry. Are y'all still like lifelong friends with uh, the other actors? Oh, like so oh, and lots and of Kevin Smith. Of course, they've become family. It's, you learn to be, you kind of like wandering gypsies, you know? You kind of in and out of each other says you're there, right. you're family for a while, and right. then you move on. And so you learn to, 
the first couple of movies we did, especially The Man in the Moon, we were devastated when that was over because we had gotten so close to everybody. It's like going and, to camp. And films used to take a long time to shoot. Right. Uh, we, when we shot on film, they took a long time. And so you'd get really, really close. Now with digital technology, movies are shot on a shoestring budget. They're only a couple of weeks. And so you don't have that time to get as close to everybody. But the the ones that uh, you bond with on there, it, it, that bond never really goes away. Uh, and you hope in the future that your paths will cross again. Mm -hmm. And, and they always like, do. One way or another. Yeah. And, and Even at these conventions, a lot of these conventions yeah, do that for us. You, I, I stopped know? saying goodbye and I started saying see you next time. Right. right. Because you just you you just end up running into the same people again and again and again and again. So there's no reason to to go like boo hoo like like you're at camp, you know, because like you said, on the man in the moon, it, it seemed like the end of the world. Oh, you just met all these amazing people and and we didn't we know didn't. if we were ever going to work in a movie again. That was our first one, and so we didn't wow. know if that was right, ever right. We didn't know if we hit the lottery and that was just it. Mm, yeah. Or right. what? You know? Why not so, next year's the 30th anniversary of Days Confused? I yeah. Know if there may be like old. a reunion and something for you all, you know. Okay. I said next year's like the 30th anniversary um, of Days Confused. Yeah. So I didn't know if there would be like a reunion coming up for you all. Well, or no we've already that. done them all. Really? I mean, yeah, we, we've done the 10 year, the 20 year, the 25 year, wow. and then we just recently did, during COVID, we did uh, like, like one of those things where everybody's in like little squares and we did the entire movie. So you can find that if you want, if you want to watch that, you can see the entire cast um, do the movie, except uh, Affleck wasn't there because he was in uh, South Africa, and so Ashton Kutcher came in and played his character. So that was super cool. Yeah. 30 years, huh? You're old. I think, I, I think it's over 30 years now, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's around, 30, it's around 30 years. Got another question over so here. Weird. There's another one back there, right here. We got one right here, right here, sir. No, here. You both have done a lot of TV, a lot of film. Which would you rather do and why? Both. I, it, honestly, you do them for kind of different reasons. Honestly, film is uh, an opportunity to kind of play a little bit more diverse characters and mix it up and play. It's just you, you're kind of always changing, and, and, and you can usually change up the dialogue if you need to. Uh, you can add your two cents into it a little bit more on movies. Television is very rigid. You have to say the lines exactly as they tell you to, that you can't change anything, uh, and then you're playing the same character over and over and over and over. And it gets a little bit monotonous, but the money's way better in television. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Especially these days. Yeah, and so yeah. For, they're, they're better for different reasons. Uh, the, the stability with the being on a television show uh, and getting the regular money is, is, is better. But I think as actors, it's more fun to do movies because of the fact that you, I mean, I get to play complete psychopaths in movies or, you know, just people yeah. that are, characters that are just completely different than who I am a little bit more. The two television shows I've been on, I've basically played like the, the boyfriend that rides the motorcycle kind of guy. It's, you know, okay for what it was back when the, in the 90s when I was younger, but it, now I, I'm, a, I'm almost 50 this year. We're 50 this year. And I like in to two play months. lawyers and doctors and men, <laughs> you know? <Yeah. laughs> I have a grandbaby now. I like to yeah. actually play like, grown up. And also, like, when you start, like, looking into it just from a monetary value, you, you, you start devaluing what the art of it is and why we love doing what we do. And so, while the money can be good, and then the money can be shit, um, it's, did you enjoy the experience? Did you enjoy meeting the people that you worked with? Um, are you looking forward to the outcome of the film? So uh, I think that that has a lot more to do with it as you, as you get a little bit older. When you're younger, you're like, money, 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 money. Now I'm like, fun, 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 fun. <laughs> Meet good people. Have I, a I good like to time. be challenged. You know, I just like to be challenged. After doing this for 32 years, it's fun to be challenged. I just did a movie called Open that is diff more different than anything. I've, I've never seen a movie like it. I've never been in a movie like it. And uh, I mean, they have me 
looking like Stevie Ray Vaughan yeah. and these like musical there's, there's a musical aspect to it like it sounds so weird but it, it I've never done anything like that and so to be able to at this point do just anything different that's challenging uh, you, you're gonna get that opportunity in movies a little bit more than it would on television and you're getting to travel to different locations oh, yeah. and going to different states countries things like that you know, I've been to Bulgaria, China, Japan. It's a great question. Australia. Yeah. You, you know, you, you, you get to go to places that you would never imagine getting to go to. And so it's one of the things that, you know, that's worth more than that's worth more than money. I mean, it's just to have these experiences, you know. Bulgaria, Romania, like all, all kinds of places. Fun in like, Bulgaria. Who can say that who can say that you've been able to do that, you know? And so you just have to sit back and just appreciate the opportunities that God's given us, and, you know, and, and we do. And, uh, and we just got to do two movies together, and uh, we've got a couple more coming up, hopefully. And, um, you know, it's just been, uh, it's been a wild ride. Yeah. Thank you, the gentleman back there, Mike. Uh, like our boy said there a minute ago, uh, uh, Days to Confuse is what, 30? 30 years almost yeah, now? I think, wow. it's, I think it might be just a little bit over 30. Is it? Wow. Yeah. Amazing, but uh, it's still considered a perennial classic. Yeah, it, but it's getting more and more popular every year, which yeah. is tripping me out, man. Yeah, so oh, I, was, yeah. I, I know why I love it, but why do you think that it is stuck with people this long? Is this a door? Because I think that every generation that watches it adopts it as their own movie. This is our movie. This is the, this is this is my generation. Well, no, it's not. You're a millennial. No, it's not. But they still they relate to it, like you know. And it used to have this sort of like weed, weed smoking uh, kind of aspect to it. And my thing I've always said is like, this is not a drug movie. This is a movie that told about 1976 and people smoked right. dirt weed. And like you know, there, there, there's there's nothing about the movie that makes it a drug movie other than a bunch of people, the high schoolers, hanging out and doing what high schoolers do. So I I love that the the onus isn't on it being a drug movie like it used to be. You know, even the poster, you know, it, it sort of makes it a you know the day they would never the, the forget stone, the stone happy face. Yes, yeah, the stone happy face. The day they would never remember if only they could. Or the day they never forget, if only they could remember. Yeah, it's funny, but that just that sort of takes away from what the the the, the, the region of the movie is. It doesn't movie. hurt that the soundtrack's amazing. And the and the, and the greatest soundtrack of all time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I truly think that is the best soundtrack of any movie ever made. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it was cool because um, when we did the film, um, Richard Linklater basically said. Do not turn your TV on. You're not allowed to watch modern TV. Here's the soundtrack of, and he made cassettes of his dream soundtrack. And he said, this is what you do. You listen to this all day. And so we would go out on boats, we would float on the river, and we would just listen to that music. And we'd all just be like, oh, this is cool, man. It might have been some marijuana smoke. Uh, I think we smoked Austin out of all of his weed. No, I'm not joking. I think we smoked Austin out of all of his weed. Yeah. I remember Mila Jovovich kind of like throwing a little bit of a fit about it. The, the, the dudes were like, man, what are we supposed to do about it? You smoked it all, and she, Mila. And she was like, I need, I, need some, I need some weed. And the rest of us were like, come on, calm, calm down, man. <laughs> And Cole Hauser, who was underage, but he looked of age, taking him to a bar. I can't tell you how many times we got chased out of the bar. He was just, he would be drinking that whatever Irish whiskey he could drink. And he would just end up getting just mean to people. And we would end up getting kicked the fuck out of the place. I was like, I didn't do anything. I didn't even drink at the time. I was like, and so I ended up having to like chase them down so they didn't beat the hell out of Cole Hauser. 
If it isn't somebody else, it was a great experience. Got a Just question here. here. With the best beard in the house. <laughs> I hear you grow it yourself. Yeah, happy beard there, pal. Appreciate yeah, it. Nice. Appreciate it. Um, do you watch your own work? And if you do, are, is it an entertaining thing or is it more like a self critique? Uh, it probably depends on the project, really. I, you know, there, there are movies that we do. Um, with, listen, when you get it, you got offered a movie. We always hope that it turns out to be what we see in our mind. But you realize that the end result of a movie is up to however good the director is. It's one of the reasons I started directing. And the editor. And the editor, because there have been so many movies that have been in that I thought were going to be good movies, and then I watched them, and I was like, what the hell? Like, how could you possibly have butchered it that bad? Yeah. And so, for those reasons, because all of a sudden I'm like, I'm in a bunch of really crappy movies. <laughs> like, wow, I thought these were going to be good, but they're, this is not a good movie. And But it really does come down to the director and the editor. Yeah and uh, the amount of money they put into the post-production. And so it just really more than a, I, I'm always happy with my performance in general, but I, I'm not happy with the, if I'm not happy with the movie, I will. Yeah, well, that's the one thing that, we, we, that we, he and I both will get, will be somebody that will watch it and they'll go, you were the best part of the movie. That's the best, that's, that's all we can ask for. I mean, there's nothing, I mean, once- That's all we can have control over. Once we're done, all you have control once over. we're done, it's out of our hands. And it's, as an actor, it's your job just to show up and yeah. work. You know, and, and so yeah, so you just you try to do like if you were to just cut your scenes out of the crappy movie, and you put them like all in a row, like it would actually it would be decent. But then like you watch the rest of the movie and you're like, why wasn't I on set that day? This is crap. Well, I just watched, recently watched a Branded again, the movie that Jason and I did together, and I'm so proud of this. I'm really really proud of this, and it really makes me happy to be able to say that. And we also, when we got on the set in Lake Tahoe, we realized that the guy making the movie had never made a movie before. Had no he idea had what he was no talking about. No idea how to yeah. set up a show. He didn't know the protocol. He had. He didn't know what he was doing. And so Jason and I were like, well, I guess we're making this movie. We're the ones. So we would literally rewrite the scenes every day. Uh, we would come in with complete rewrites and we'd tell him, this is what we're doing today. And we would have to tell him how to set up the cameras and stuff like that because he thought he'd just put a camera up told actors to get in front of it and a movie got made. But that's not the process. You have to rehearse it and stage it, figure out like where well, where, where do people be an artist. Yeah, yeah. Be, be an artist. Give it movement. You don't just put a camera up and tell actors to be in front of it and dance, monkey dance. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. You know? I mean you can, but it's gonna look like it should be crap. And yeah. we don't want to be in a crappy movie. And so we knew right then we were like, oh wow, we're definitely not oh, just, and we just were acting in this movie. Also, we were up in the mountains where they didn't, they had no cell service. They couldn't even use walkie-talkies because it was so... There was no internet. In the, there was no internet. It was, so we're like literally just stuck. stuck. And we're, we're like, do we, do we run home or do we try to do this? Because we liked the script. We, we liked it. had potential. Um, when we realized that. It needed more work than we realized we were going to work on it. It, it became a full full time job. Oh man! The end result's worth it though. I mean, you know, luckily, except the sound. The, sound the sound's great. not great, but mm -hmm. the, you know, once again, that's something we can't have. We don't have any control over that. You know, but we we did have control over uh, the, the acting and and the dialogue because um, the guy had written it. Like we literally, he had written, had a speaking in like this weird old, old English like bizarre kind of thing that just had they made no remember that and so we'd have to like literally rewrite everything and make all this weird bizarre you like like thought we were it's so it like shakespearean old english yeah. garbage well it, like, it was like, translated from a chinese ghost film so he thought whenever he was going to do it he was going to do it like eloquently and he failed miserably he just he just in the, the, the experience experience teaches you that this is not going to turn out good. Yeah. You know, and we were like, it might look good on paper, buddy, yeah. but this is not You can't good. put lipstick on a pig. Yeah, no, yeah, so we basically had to just retrain the pig. Anybody else? Anybody, Anybody? else? Anybody? I got a question for yes, you sir. all. Uh, being that how you just spoke about, you know, you help in parts like writing, directing, and that type of stuff, 
Is there a part of the industry that you love more than the other? And I realize it's both, it's, it's all art, you know, making it all work together, but is there part of it that you two love as far as more I than the other? I love directing, I love directing. Uh, and I, and I, I've gotta say, I also love teaching. Um, I started an acting school uh, called London Arts Acting School and uh, down on the Gulf Coast of Mississippi. And a couple of years back, we uh, made a, this little movie called Monsters Anonymous uh, with my acting students. And we, I was lucky enough to get Brian O'Halloran from Clerks to come down and play Dracula for us. Um, it, was, it was this cute little movie. You can find it on YouTube. Um, it's only about 20 minutes long. Uh, we just won first place at the Cannes Film Festival. So, I actually, Jason came in with my first AD. I was the first AD for the yeah, first time. That first was AD. fun. So, yeah, I ran the show real good. Yeah, it was great, man. We, we shot it in two days. And like I said, they're all my students. I mean, so not only did I get to make this fun little movie, but I get to see my students act and do this really great little movie that now has won at the Cannes Film Festival. And uh, just... Uh, that part of that aspect of it, to me, is more fun because I do get to control what the end result's gonna be. Like I said, we've been in so many movies that we thought were gonna turn out good, but because the director didn't have any vision or they're lazy, or they just simply didn't have the experience to understand that phoning it in uh, isn't the best route because it, you'll wind up paying well, for it. Well, just relying on the actors to do the work for you. Yeah. I will point a camera at them, the actors will do all the work and they'll take the credit later. Yeah, it doesn't, you know, camera movement is just as important as anything. Just music is as important as the, as the performances. The, 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 the marriage of all of the elements uh, to, to making a movie uh, is what is going to make the end result be uh, good or bad, right? And if you slack on one of those things, I can't tell you how many times I've heard a director say, oh, we'll fix it in post. Uh, yeah, there's an airplane flying over, that's okay, just say your lines anyway, we'll fix it in post. Uh, and it, that never works out. It, that never works out. They wind up shooting themselves in the foot. They wind up not shooting enough footage so they can get cut the, for the editor to get the proper cutter, cover, coverage. Uh, in case somebody's performance isn't good, you can that great with this part. You want to be able to cut away from them. Or you can hear them, but you don't have to necessarily see them. But, uh, you know, if you don't shoot it properly, you're kind of stuck having to show that bad It's all about proper preparation. Yeah. You know, if you, if you do the proper preparation and everything runs military style where everybody gets to do their job and they don't step on other people's feet. And you, I say the, 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 the Filmmaking has been time tested and proved. If you, just like the military, if you let everybody do their job, it's going to run like a well oiled machine, you know? And so a lot of times people, their, their ego is not your amigo. And people don't realize that. You get like sort of uh, fresh out of uh, film school kids coming in thinking that they've got some new way to. To, to invent something, no you don't. Do it the way that people have done it the right way for a long time. Uh, the digital technology's kind of, I think, muddied the waters because everybody and their dog can make a movie now because of the, it's become cheap. And so people have forgotten that it's not really necessarily easy to make movies. It's definitely not easy to make good movies. It's easy to churn something out, to shoot something and put it together. But for the end result to be good uh, there's a lot of things that have to happen that are right. A lot of people have to be on the same page together. Uh, so there's, I think, honestly, I think the worst thing that ever happened in this industry was digital technology. Oh man, absolutely. You know, the, films being able to be shot. Well, for because cheap. now they're making you're making a million movies a year, where they used to not be able to do that. Well, then how do you make a movie that people actually get a chance to see? You know, you get a and bunch of people making the same movie. Well, and I, the, I, it's the same movie well, over and over and over. What over. I say is the cream rises to. So, be the cream. Be, 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 be better than everybody else because that is the only way it's going to be seen. Yeah, but you're talking about cream rising to the top of water, of, of, of like a, a drink that has been 
completely diluted yeah, with garbage. <laughs> so you gotta, you gotta rise to the top and you gotta dodge a tur this turd and that turd. So you really, it's, it's more like the, the good crap rising to the top of the other crap and then you gotta like rise above that crap, not the B crap. And then you have to evaporate and become something else. Well, there, are, there are movies, there are movies that do well these days and you gotta, it's, you gotta think outside of the box and you gotta, you, 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 you gotta not re generate the same bullshit that's been made for so many years. I mean, the same damn movie gets made over and over and over and over. It's like, how, how many people in a cabin in the woods movies can you make? Like, uh, like, Apparently a lot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Any other questions? Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Got time for one more question. Anybody got one? Because i got to get back to my table. I want to do some more. Hey, we appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, you were pretty good. Eh, you were okay. I was better, but that's good. Make sure you check out the merchandise table. Go check them out. Some pictures, autograph pictures and everything. So make sure you check them out, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, give the round of applause for the London Brothers. Thank you.